Welcome to Your Journey. I'm your host, Chuck Lewis, and we got a special guest with us today, and Steve Breston, a.k.a. Willie Beeman. What's going on, man? What's up, Steve? How you doing? Everything good, man. How you been? How you been, man, bro? Man, I'm good, man. Thanks for coming on. Obviously, we in this transition right now, COVID-19, the pandemic, everything that's going on. Um, just trying to adjust. How are you and your family adjusting with everything that's happening with the COVID-19 and all the adjustments you got to make? Um, I th everybody's holding up. I think my biggest concern is like I, I have older parents, so like uh, you know, one of the big things with me is just uh, making sure they're all right and you know they got to be indoors. They got you know take this serious and like you know I try you know do the same thing about social distancing. And I'm I'm not trying to infect them with anything. So you know I just been cautious out here. But you know as of now everybody's healthy. Uh, my family's doing well. You know it's you know. And it's, it's kind of, you know, everybody's moving through these times, you know. So, you know, one of the things I've done is take more walks, things like that, and just uh, getting outside and getting out in the open, you know. And you know, that's been beneficial. It also allows you to communicate with people. Like, you know, before it was just like some people were like constantly on the move, constantly doing something. But I think a lot of people like really sat down, whether it's, uh, you know, beyond text messages, like having Zoom, like Zoom group chats with people and, I've done that with like college friends. I've done that with family and that's been great, you know, like, and you wouldn't have done that in a time where it's like everybody's moving around and everybody's busy. And, you know, that's, you know, that's a good way to communicate, good, good way to see, seeing people, see if they're healthy, good way to check in on people. So, I mean, you know, everybody, everything's going pretty well considering everything that's going on. Nah, it's good to hear. Same on my end too, just trying to adjust to a new way of doing things. Let me ask you this. Um, we're operating in this new normal, right? Do you ever think that we will get back to what normal used to be for us? No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I, I, we, we haven't even got over the hump yet to figure out what it, what it is going to be. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, as of now, like, you know, I think whether it's, whether we figure out how to, you know, live with this and, you know, we get the you know, antidote, the cure for it. And, you know, we still have to, after it, look forward to like prevention of something else may come up. Right. So it's going to like, not only does it affect the way we go, but like after our planning, you know, as a, you know, as people, as a country and things like that. So, and as we, the way we live our life. And I, I think, you know, it's been probably five months, you know, four or five months, and a lot of people have been in and out of quarantine. And, you know, a lot of people found a lot of lot of things about themselves and about other people. And, uh, you know, people have found new stuff to do. You know, like I said, better way to communication. Uh, you know, work's changed for people. Uh, some, some may feel like they don't need to go into work and put that beat the nine to five and, you know, you know, every day, you know, they might try to find something different. So, you know, it's, I think a lot of people are going to come out of this, you know, differently and it's, it's not going to be normal. And, but, uh, you know, but that's, you know, that's also maybe the beauty of a lot of things because it's, it's forcing you out of certain comfort zones and it's forcing you probably to do some stuff you've never done before and some stuff that you might enjoy. No, I completely agree with that because I think, with what the coronavirus and dealing with COVID-19 has done, it, it's gotten you out of being in the rat race of everything. Like for myself, mm -hmm. you know, just driving every day, being in traffic for 45 minutes to an hour, you know, like you're just so used to going through the grind of everything and just making sure you got to get to this destination and that destination. Then when you add kids to the equation, it's a lot. You find yourself at 11 o'clock at night, just falling asleep on the couch, you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, it's definitely giving everybody a chance to just sit back and reflect on their life. And really just to kind of reflect on the next step and how we're going to adjust to this new way of doing things. Well, let's get right into it, man. So uh, you grew up in Braddock, PA. Talk about what it was like growing up in Braddock as a kid. 
Oh man, it was fun. It was uh, it, like I did, I know like uh, like I always like rep where I'm from, no matter what it is. It's not like, like you know. Every, I think everybody knows like I'm from the Pittsburgh area, but like I try to represent like yo Braddock, like North Braddock, like that's why I try to do because you know that's those are years that was just like will always be special with me. You know whether it's like with little league baseball and you know playing like football and things like that. And I've met so many friends just and like I still. I still have a lot of friends to this day from childhood, like more friends. You know how people in life like get more friends, like as they grow older and I mean from college and things like that. Like a lot of my friends is from like, you know, grade school and high school, you know, I still keep in touch with. Um, but it was, it was a blast. You know, I got three older brothers, uh, you know, one of the things with them, like they, like, especially my brother BB, like he never, like he's one of those brothers like that, always like pull me along with him like you know what I'm saying he never like no he never like try to like force me not to be around and things like that I was on a bike with him and his friends and I was playing baseball with him and his friends I was playing football and all that stuff like and this was at a young age and I and I think that helped me help me out a lot and you know at that time you know you would say like you know our community was like very close you know uh and I knew you know, you knew everybody's parents. I knew everybody's parents. Like we, we stayed at each other's houses. Um, you know, it's that trust within the community. Um, you know, I think, you know, it was, it was a, it was. This is definitely a special time, and you know, it's, it's, it will always be a special time for me. Like growing up there, and like that's why I always go back there, and that's why I will always, you know, give back, you know, and support, you know, anything that's positive and help that community grow. So you attended Woodland Hills High School. Talk about your experience there as a student and as an athlete. Uh, man, I was, uh, as a student, man, I just, you know, got my grades done. And I was quiet. Uh, I remember I had a conversation with my, uh, I wasn't quiet. Like, I was quiet in school, but y'all know I wasn't quiet around y'all. But, you know, I, was, I, I kept a, you know, real low key. Uh, I think the, I, I remember I had a conversation with my mom when, time like going into my senior year and like some girl got mad at me for like because I, I was confused <laughs> like she she said I was like acting too good or something like uh, I didn't speak to her or something yeah. and I'm like yo like I'm always quiet like I don't maybe you just noticing me more or things like that but like I'm always quiet and uh, I'm just, I just remember my mom saying like you know like people don't know you Steve like you know this is how you always are and everything's changing around you you know, rather like, you know, with football and like getting a little notoriety and things like that. So you, you have to speak up more, like you have to talk more. And it's not in the sense that like, it was like, it was almost like, you know, you speak, speak up so like you could like not defend yourself, but to understand like, so they can understand you. Cause like, you always been quiet. Like that has nothing, you know, you've been quiet since you were younger and like, you know, sometimes like people are taking that the wrong way. Like you acting too good, but you never, you know, you just always just, often to the side and things like that and you know from that point on like I probably was more vocal and I probably communicated more you know it, it might not have been that much more until I got older but I uh, definitely uh you know spoke more um uh, as far as like sports I mean like I it, it was I it was like it was it was a golden era out of high school if you think about it you know what I'm saying like with uh especially with football and even with basketball uh, you know, a lot of my friends, like, I went to school, like, played baseball with, major league with, uh, you know, we, we went all the way up to high school. No one really, like, you know, went to other schools and, like, everybody was really in Willow Hills and, like, and everybody seems like, yo, like, they stuck it out. Like, yo, like, I may be going, probably could start somewhere else or play for you somewhere else, but, like, it's like, yo, like, like I'm staying here. And, like, I tell, I said, you know, that, and it was always competitive. So, like, even when I got to college, like, it's, it's uber competitive. Like, now you got people from every state and whatever. And I just remember in my head, like, I was, and I always say, it, like, I had, what, five or six people that went D1 in front of me. Like, and, right. like, and that's, that was that high school practice, you know, like, so, like, you know, playing sports there was, like, you know, I, I couldn't, you know, whether – I couldn't get no, there was no other competition outside of, like, even, like, in a game, like, practice, like, that was the best competition I had, like, in that area, like, was in practice, 
you know, if you look at the, the, you know, the group I was with as far as like, you know, Ralph going D1, you know, like Spence, you know, going D1 and going to the league. You look at Jay Russ, Dre Russ going D1. You look at, um, you know, Monte, uh, Marv, you know, like those dudes were like, you know, like I, I played against them every day, whether it was on receiver, whether it's in the secondary, you know, like, and then like you got a player like, uh, you know, like Flowers was there and things like that. And the thing about him was everybody had so much respect for Flowers. Probably like he didn't have as much talent as everybody, but everybody had so much respect for him because the way he played the game, how smart he played the game, like he, he fit in like he belonged. But like, and it's probably like, it was like, uh, it was like, you know, and then, Brendan, Brendan was there also, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, you know, just talking about that was like right in front of me. And then you look at people who like, you know, you like on the line, you know what I'm saying? Like you go D1, you look at Tyree. And I always, I told somebody about Tyree the, like the other day, like probably like, probably like, probably a month ago. Because, uh, you know, they everybody talks about who they try to look up to, who you look up to in high school. Yeah at a certain point but like I I never looked at anybody in high school when I was younger because I was like I said like I always was like focused in front of me so like when I was in midget ball it was like it was like 2-2 it was like 2-2 in uh Deedle like Deedle yeah, like he was, he was unreal you know what I'm saying like yeah, yeah. things like that like when I got to like you know and I, I look I look beside me I look at Reem like Reem is like the man the guy I look at Tay Tay's like a year older than me and I look at like uh, bring it back Tyree. One thing I learned about Tyree was like when Tyree was a sophomore, and how much like yo like he's a dog like mm-hmm. yeah fullback a linebacker, mm-hmm. and you see that like those are the things I seen like I didn't look like too far ahead of me. I was just looking like like I want to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like because mix. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like Tyree was going to be like it was like oh he going to do one like he's like and he. He came back that after that summer, like a brick, like, you know what I'm saying? And, but like, I was in that group. Like I was around that, those talented people. And, you know, like, whether it's that and, you know, even though I play well in basketball, like you got more, like more was a legit Hooper. You got Allen, J. Russ, you got Bill Johnson, you got Ralph. Like, you know, it was just a, it was a good time to play sports at uh, one of those. Yeah, well, obviously it was really good for you uh, so your junior season, you start to gain some success. Uh, let's talk about the Central Catholic game. Uh, <laughs> this is where the legend of Stevie B begins. Um, so you come into the game. Um, at the end of the second quarter, you check in. We're down by a couple of touchdowns. What's going through your mind and what's your mentality checking into the game? Uh, I had, man, I was just playing. Like, I didn't – I was uh, – I just know, like, uh, you know, before that – before you even got to that point, like I was like before the season, like I had a really good camp, like uh, whether it's like at uh, wide receiver or like um, you know the, the corner, you know what I'm saying? I had a really good camp at corner, and like I played Q, I had a good camp at QB too, but uh, you know I was just you know I was on the field, like I was I was my mindset that whole year was like make a play wherever you at. You know what I'm saying? Like, whether it's getting picks. I know I was blocking punts earlier in the season and things like that. And I remember, like, you know, they said I was going in. Like, I didn't feel no type of way. Like, I'm, I'm out there with my dogs. So, like, it was like, at the end of the day, like, it was like, you know, I'm, I'm just another. Because, you know, I felt like they could have put someone else there at QB. Like, Tay could have probably put, you know, ran QB or things like that. Like, we had a lot of talent there. But, like, I – I didn't feel no worries because I was out there. Y'all made it easier for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the defense was like, defense was really good. We was balling, we played well. We struggled that game a little bit, but you know what I'm saying? Like, when you got out there and I got Tay and Reem behind me, you know, got Bingo, I got, you know, Marv, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, the receivers I have and things like that, like the line, like, I didn't, I didn't worry about much. I, I just went in there and felt like I was do my job. And, you know, I you know I felt like I had something. You know, I I, I was waiting to show it. So, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't feel no type of way. I just wanted to go out there and just uh, help us win the game for real, for real. So you even had more success uh, later on down in the year in track and field. Uh, you got an opportunity to uh, place and make it to the states uh, in the three hundred hurdles. What was that experience like for you? The worst. 
<laughs> the worst experience, man. I'll tell you why, because, like, I I made it to States, and I remember, like, uh, I just wanted to run tra- – there, there was another thing. I just wanted to run track for my homeboys. Like, it was just, like, I didn't – like, I ran ninth grade track, and I don't think I ran – I didn't run in 10th grade. I played baseball, you know, because, you know, I love baseball and things like that. But, you know, going into – you know, I didn't – I didn't run, play baseball uh, going to my level. I decided to run track, and I decided to pick one of the harder events. And, and I'm not – with me at track, it was weird because, like, you know, at working out the time was different for me. Like, I would sit there and be like, yo, like, I would tell the track coach, I'm at the, I'm in upstairs lifting, <laughs> and I would tell him the, uh, Coach Dean, you know, I'm downstairs on the track. So I was sitting in the locker room and wasn't doing nothing, like – at the time, and like I never like uh, Coach Mundy and Coach Hodge will always try to get me going and like try to get my like race strategy and things like that. Try to teach me, and I remember I was like, I just I just wanted to run. Like I didn't I didn't use a block, you know nothing, and I ended up looking up and like I get like I win like I don't know if it's the Butler meet. I won an invitation and things like that, and I was winning races throughout the year. And then I was like, I end up breaking like the uh, WPIO record in the uh, 300 hurdles. And in my head, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I'm just running. Like, I'm just running like. Just running like. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Hopping like, hop the fence. I had, no form, I had no form going up over hurdles. Like, I'm just hopping over them. Like, yeah. no form. And I just, I got all the way to the States. And I just remember, like, uh, I, I was there. And I was just like, and there was a kid that was just moving. And, you know, I was taught to whole year like oh you do this right you could run that time you know what I'm saying and I was so reluctant to change anything and I I remember like I get out late in the hurdles in the state and I think I hit the like first one whatever like I I hit one and I'm just behind and I'm boom like I'm going then I'm I'm catching up but all this energy trying to catch up no form whatever I go to hit the last hurdle boom fell over and I end up placing like seven and and like probably like uh it's one of the few times I like Try like on like a, on the field like on a like playing event, but like that was difficult. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, it was something like as a as the season got going, like like I started appreciating and I started like, and even though like I I couldn't correct it all the way, like my form and things like that. You know, I tried to, and you know, it was difficult. But like it it, it also I look back at it as like it amazed me. Like I was able to, you know, get that far. And, you know. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely uh, good. And then you transition into your senior year and you take your game in football to the next level. Uh, you finished that year with 34 touchdowns. Uh, you were a 2001 Gatorade Player of the Year in Pennsylvania. Um, and then you were Quad A Player of the Year as well that year. What went into that offseason for you to operate at that such a high level in high school? Uh, I think, you know, it Preparation as far as like working hard, whether I was, you know, working at the high school by myself or with Mr. Davis and things like that. And there's a group of guys around me who also, you know, just doing a lot of the same stuff I was doing, you know, outside of, you know, what I may have been doing on my own. Um, I told my, I had told my brother, like, it, like everything slowed down to me. And one of the main reasons why, like, I just, I, I felt really good going into that year and like, once again, like, I, I I didn't talk much about it. Like, communication with my brother, like, you talk about football and things like that. But uh, I I looked at it as, like, last season I went and, and I started with the – was that fourth game? I played – I came in and played QB the fourth, fourth game of the season. Mm-hmm. And the reality was, like, I didn't I, – the year before I – before that game, I never took a – junior varsity snap at QB. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I played safety at JV. Yeah. I played sophomore QB. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, going from sophomore QB to, a, you know, playing starting varsity QB, right. you know, without taking a snap at JV is just, like, you know, like, I did as best as I could do. But, like, I was just more prepared. Like, I, I just seen the game differently. Um, you know, like, I felt like I've always been, you know, talented and you know get through my abilities and things like that but going into that season was just a different you know you know like I said different preparation and a different mindset like I've 
I've seen a team win win the Whitfield, and I've seen a team lose the Whitfield on a, like you know in the last play of the next year. And my head was, and probably a lot of my teammates here, like I, I told said before, like I, I thought about state championship, like that's all I thought about. And like you know, people always debate like who's the best like Woodland Hills team and things like that. And my whole idea was like, yo, I didn't I didn't want the Whitfield championship. Like I wanted to like go to states. Like I wanted to be mentioned with like like the '94 McKee Sport team. I wanted to be like uh, Penn Hills, like uh, Schrader and Thompson type thing. Like I want to be like Labar. Like I wanted to be like that team. Those teams right there. Like I, that's what I wanted to be the Woodland Hills team like that year. And I, and a lot of my teammates did. And I think you know we had a a great season. And it, 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 it stung. It stung. It stung when we didn't we didn't win states, cause like we we was in that we were been in that discussion of being like one of the you know best team that ever came out the area, but we lost that one game. And I mean we got as high as the third in the nation in the USA Today, you know. And we did we didn't we lost and didn't even drop out of the top twenty five. So you know it was one of those things like in you know when people bring up great teams around like the Western Pennsylvania or even Pennsylvania, like we're always like left out. We're, we're forgotten a little bit, but like that team was like in like as far as defensively and the the home run hitters we had and like uh, it was, I mean, we, I think we changed the way, like uh, it was different than any other team we, that had Willing Hills even had, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people said to like, well, this and this and this, like, no, like, you, no one's seen like what we did, but no one's seen a game like Central number one and number. We're number one in the state and Central number two in the state, and we're both in the same uh, Quaddies Conference. Like, and there's you know so many fans, people packed out. Like, no one has seen that, you know, and you know, like, and it's like it hasn't been done since. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, but um, you know, like. That year, like I was, I was probably locked in. I remember I didn't talk to everybody's like, call, like recruiters would call me, or, like recruiting agents would call me. I was like, yo, like what's your top five? And it was like I never had a top five. Like I was just like, I'm focused on the season. Yeah. Like that's my thing. Like I'm focused on the season. And I focus on my teammates. And and it wasn't like, oh, like I'm trying to like, oh, I'm focused because I want to you know get to the league, or whatever. Like I'm focused because I, I just enjoying this stuff with my friends. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like that was. Outside of, like, I don't think people thought it was, like, people think it was, like, I don't think people didn't know it was, like, it wasn't that serious. Yeah. Like, it was just, like, us out there going playing ball and, like, having fun. Like, we joked around. We did so much stuff in the locker room. Like, but, like, but we, we wanted something, but it wasn't, like, it was also fun in the moment. Like, we also enjoyed every moment of that. No, I agree. Like, I remember, like, before we would go to games, like, we used to ride together sometime to the game. We'd be playing video games before the game. Like, we wasn't, like, <laughs> pizza's pizza, you know, or, or going to Wendy's or something like that. We just, you know, we just embraced it. I think that we have put so much time in together. You got to figure, man, like, you know, like, for you and myself, we played baseball. You know, I would play first base. You would play second base. We just knew each other, like, so well. We've been playing together since age seven or eight years old. So by the time we got to the high school level, we knew each other's strengths. We knew like how to motivate one another, and we, we competed so much. Like we like you talked about, Mr. Keith and, and Keith. Like we used to be down uh, in the alley playing basketball, and we competed against one another. Like you and my flowers would be going against each other, and me and Tay would be going against each other because we were like the bigger guys. But and obviously, I was like the biggest out of everybody. But you know, we just competed, man, and it was a healthy competition. You know, we we went at each other, and it was like even a guy like myself. There would be times I'd be like, man, man, I got Steve. Like, I'm the biggest guy. I know I can't, I can't stay up with him, but I'm like, I got him. Like, you know what I'm saying? I believed in my head that I could still run with the smaller guys, and that helped my game so much. You guys doing what you guys did help me because it helped me be an athlete and not a defensive lineman. I was an athlete that played defensive line, and you guys are so much beneficial for me. Um, so you do well that year, and then you just transition and you continue to take off. You got selected to play in the Big 33 game. Um, what was that experience like for you? Oh man, it was it was it was great. Like I remember telling my brother, uh, I told BB when I when we went to go see a uh, Tootin on play. I told him I was gonna be in that game, <laughs> and you know, like I was just I, that's probably the only time I probably like ever was like yo, like yeah, I'm gonna be in that yeah, game. Yeah. Like I, I remember telling him that. Like, and it's funny because BB's like a lot of people don't know BB's like my right hand man. Like yeah. I tell him 
like every day. He tell me like, and like you know, we have different names, but like that's that's my brother, man. Like I have some had some real good conversations with BB, and uh, I remember I told him I was going to be in that game. And I ended up getting in the game, and you know we lost the states. We lost the states up there, yeah. and I remember like it was like every Ohio had like a bunch of D one. Like we had, you know, we had some D one, but we majority of us like going to like smaller schools and things like that. Yeah. And you know we had Paco's a QB and things like that. And this is my first time ever like really playing predominantly wide receiver. Like I caught two passes like. I don't even think I caught two passes. I think I caught like one pass is like my, my whole senior year, you know what I'm saying? Things like that. And I remember like I was in practice, like locked in. It was, I guess I was like, I don't know if they was, they was up there for play, but like I was up there, like I need to make a statement. Cause right. like last time I've been up here, it was like, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a good experience. Yeah. And I remember like we played one, we had one-on-ones defense. Like I was like, like, going off like man like and and like uh I forgot the I think it's Burwick curse uh I forgot who the coach was uh, he was just like he was like shaking his head and uh, it was just like I just knew like the ball is going to be going to me in this game like I, I caught three passes but like it was like two 70 something yard passes and, and a 31 and like I ended up breaking like the the record for that game too yeah. which was like that was dope like that was that was fun and it was also like it it you know I get you know even though I didn't win the states like I just felt like I showed like you know like this would like this is what was about to happen if like that feel was normal like my ankle wasn't screwed up you know what I'm saying like you know, like, this is it, you know what I'm saying? And I, th I think even, like, the you know, couple of players that was on in the Chamonix team that was on our team, they, I think they seen it too, you know what I'm saying? So, but uh, it was fun. It was definitely fun. It was a, a fun week. Uh, it was uh, good to play against competition that you might play at the next level and things like that. And, you know, it gave you, it gave you somewhat little confidence going into the next level, you know, understanding, like, these are the guys that's moving forward. So uh, you accept the full athletic scholarship to the University of Michigan. You go from being in, in Braddock, Pennsylvania, to Ann Arbor, Michigan. What was that transition like in that first year, athletically and academically? Man, it was it was it was sending me back to Pittsburgh. I thought like I, don't, I thought I was going to transfer at one point. Yeah. I think everybody has that transfer story. Right. You know, like I'm going back home, but like I just remember like it, it was different. Like, I'm from Braddock, man. Like, like you know, I'm from, you know, Woodland Hills area at the time. And, like, Ann Arbor's different. Ann Arbor's is like, you know, whether it's, like, a bunch of, like, you had some well-off people and things like that. And, you know, you know, it was a, it was a different experience, my, you know, just to get adjusted to, you know, life up there. And, you know, one of the, regardless of anything, one of the main reasons I go up there is for football, you know. So when you're not playing the first year, like, you know, so you won't feel some type of way. You know, you won't feel like, man, like you see people playing. Like I, Jason, Jason's like started, as a, like played as a true freshman. I see him, you know, we sitting at home in a dorm room watching him play, uh, you know, and then, you know, I'm just chugging along, like lifting every week, you know, like like legs on Friday. <laughs> Early morning yeah. lift, yeah. yeah. And like, you know, like it's like, and then I remember – like it was going to that spring, uh, we uh, we we doing a forty. We're running a forty, and I I don't stretch. Like that's that's just me. Like I don't stretch. Like I I, I warm up and get going that way. Yeah. And you know I see everybody stretching. See everybody stretching. I was like maybe I'm gonna get the stretching today. I'm going, and I I went to go run my forty and I pulled my hamstring. Ooh. And I was just like, man, this is the worst thing. Cause it's spring. I got I'm trying to get a job. Like I'm trying to, you know, start receiver and things like that. And I remember like I know it gets better. Then I come back and I run like I catch a like a corner route, pulled it again. Mm. And like and in my head, I'm like, yo, like this is like the worst. And I got crutches. I'm going to my classes around like in like winter, spring. Going to my classes, and it's snowing. It's cold. Like it's cold. Like I thought Pittsburgh was cold, and then I got to Ann Arbor, and I felt like that Midwest and the lake effect. And I realized how cold it is Ann Arbor. And I remember I, I called back home like yo, like 
I told my mom, like, you, you guys send me my, like, triple fat goose. You guys send me <laughs> up here. Like, that's the kind of jacket I needed up there, yeah, man. Yeah. So, like, I go back. Now, lay the back snow. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, 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 I got my books in my hand. I'm walking. I'm, I mean, I mean, crutches. I dropped my books one time, and I, I almost broke down and cried, man. I'm sitting, like, in the diag. Like, I'm just like, yo, like, I want to go. I, I need to transfer. Like, yeah, yeah. Because it was, it was just not a – it was not a good experience. Like I, get, I ended up getting a D my first like in, in one of my history classes, and I was just like, "Yo, this this is not it. Like this is not it." But like you know, like once I got I got over that hump. But I think the the biggest reason I got over that hump I didn't go home. You know, like I stayed, and I didn't like just like yo like come get me. And regardless, my 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 parents wasn't come get me. No one was no one was coming get me anyway. Like no one was gonna drive up there to come get me. You wanna stay up there and work work your way through it. You know. But, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't run home and, you know, things got better, you know, like, and, you know, my the, the crazy thing is the, the coach that recruited me also got another job somewhere else, you know, so, you know, that, that situation was there, but, you know, I got, it got better because, uh, you know, the teammates, you know, that was around and like the people I was around, like, you know, as far as like, you know, my fo- the football team and, um, you know, Monday ended up coming up there the next year. So, you know, him being there also, you know, made it a lot better. And, you know, like, you know, Marlins from Western Pennsylvania, and like mm-hmm. there's guys up there that was just like from the area. And, you know, those those guys I still, you know, still friends with today, still keep in touch with. So I mean like, you know, that that helped me a lot, you know, getting over that hump that year. Yeah, well, you were able to actually get over the hump pretty well uh, the next year. Uh, you settled in pretty well. Uh, your rest your freshman year against Oregon, uh, you had six catches for 109 yards, two touchdowns. What preparation went into that great performance that you had? That game or just the yeah, season? Game. That game, yeah. Uh, the game, uh, man, uh, it's, it was – I think I look at it like uh, – and we 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 practice hard like every week and things like that. Uh, that game was it was it was unique in a way that like uh, the defense like they drove down our defense and uh, we block a kick go like ninety something yards uh, to the hot crib and it's zero and now now seven seven uh, nothing us, but the offense didn't touch the field. We haven't touched the field yet. So the defense is still tired. It puts them right back out there, and they moved the ball back up there. We had some, uh, we had some special. They moved the ball and scored again. We had some special team problems and things like that. Uh, we had, um, you know, it was it was just one of those games. Like traveling out west, playing against Oregon. We had like I think uh, I forgot who the quarterback was. They had Sammy Parker. He played receiver and things like that. They did some. They had some speed, and you know, it was it was legit. Uh, I think the you know. We, I think me, me, Jason, and Braylon all had a hundred that game. I think yeah. I think that's what it was. I mean, if if we didn't all have a hundred, I think me and Jason might have had a hundred. Braylon had like two two touchdowns or whatever. He had a good game. Uh, I remember like, but we got down, so we got we got put the ball in the air. So you know that's sort of our rival receiver coach sort of like yo, like you know we we're about to put this thing up. And um, one of the things, other things that like we we couldn't hear ourselves talk. Like you had to be like here on the sideline, like in their face, like because the way it's built, like, that's probably one of the loudest stadiums I ever played in. You know, it's probably that's one like O State's probably second, maybe whatever. But like the way Oregon is uh, built, I, I, just, I think it's built like an amphitheater, so like it holds like the sound in and things like that. So it was just loud, and I remember using like towards the end of the second, probably quarter, and like mainly the second half, we use all hand signals. So we was going two minute like we was out there and like it was like going a three four wide receiver set. But I think that's also the game like we knew how how deadly we were like as a like wide receiver group. You know like we you know we was all making plays in uh, different ways and you know that group was uh, it was scary. So now so you cap off your freshman year uh, with winning Big Ten Freshman of the Year. How did it feel to achieve that award? It was it was dope, man. Like uh, I don't, I can't remember who was the last person who had won that award, and but it was someone special. I I can't remember it offhand, but you know, like being in the same category as that person, and when I, I also got like I ended up getting like freshman All American, uh, 
punt returner. And I, I I wanted to get like I wanted to get all American like uh with uh, the way uh you know, I think two two of my returns got called back that year and things like that. But I did a pretty good job at returning kicks. And like I felt that felt good. Like, you know, it you know like I said, like the struggles I had like my freshman year and, you know, within, you know, school and also on the, like just you know trying to get like get right with football and things like that um and it was like that was like our first Rose Bowl appearance in like I don't know how many years uh we you know we won the Big Ten championship I think that was our might be our last outright Big Ten championship if I'm not a, if I'm not mistaken so like till this day so I mean that was just a it was it, everything you know with that award just like it's a part of something that a really good season that we had, you know, whether it's like Chris winning a dope Walker, um, yes. Braylon, you know, uh, incredible season, even him going forward next year, you know, Jason playing well. I mean, it was just a, you know, it was just a good game. It was a hundred game. The hundred game was that year too, O State. And we ended up winning that game. So, I mean, uh, that, that whole, not only that, you know, winning that award, but that whole season was, uh, it was special. So in the next year, uh, you set the Rose Bowl record uh, with 315 all-purpose yards uh, in a game. How did it feel to achieve that and set that record? Uh, man, like uh, it. When I found out after the game, like it was like I think it was like O.J. Simpson's record. Like that was broken to like 1960 something. And like I don't know, like that's that that's amazing, man. Like and I think I I don't know if I spoke to you about it like I look at it now and like you don't know, like sometimes some things I never appreciated certain things within like the seasons and moments and like that but like when I look back th at things that you know you know, even will be accomplished in high school and you know over my career uh, you know I you know I feel I feel feel good about myself you know what I'm saying like I, you know, I was able to accomplish some things that you know nobody whoever was able to do you know, and, you know, whether it's records and being on some teams and things like that. And, um, you know, that game was just, it was a, we had like, you know, like it's like that between the last game and the bowl game, you have a, a, a huge break. And, you know, I think we, we discussed it, you know, before, like I had a, I had a stress fracture in my foot. And then before that season, you know, I ended up getting a pin in that foot. Midway through the season, I get a, um, I break my finger, which is which is crazy because like uh, I go to the sideline and like I think it was I think Abdul Hodge, the uh, I think the linebacker from uh, oh yeah Iowa was Iowa, his a punt return he, he hits me I don't know how my my hand got caught between my face mask and his face mask and I go to the sideline and I'm like yo like uh, my my finger is dislocated yeah so he like pulled it taped it up to the do send me back on my way. So I go back out there. I go, like, after the game, they're like, yo, we're going to take x-rays to make sure it's all right. But it's like, the good news, bad news is, like, uh, what's the bad news? Not even say, uh, what's the good news? It's like, it's a clean break. The bad news is a break. Right. So, like, um, they put, like, screws. They put, like, uh, like pins and screws, and uh, it's still there. It's a pin and the screws coming across it. And I remember, like, not being able to play the next week. And I didn't play. Like, it's always a struggle season. Like, I didn't play next week. My boy Leon took a punt to the crib. You know what I'm saying? He was in a, you know, he played the, you know, returner and things like that. And, you know, like, you know, it was like, you know, I was happy for him, but it's like, man, I'm, like, not on the field right now. Right. And like the next, the, I literally came back the next week after. Mm -hmm. And when I came back, uh, Lee drops a punt, man. And I remember like you know, my coach, like Steve, we da, 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 like you in. And I'm like, man, my hand taped up. I just got like it ain't like yeah. I, I I got, but they trust me back up there. They trust me back there. Uh, yeah, receiving punts and stuff like that, and take care of the ball. But like that was one of like it was just like up and down season and I remember like you know I had a good game against Northwestern you know right before the O-State game you know and um you know you know we went down to O-State and lost and you know I I finally got some time to like you know be off my you know my foot you know giving a chance to uh, you know you know 
even mentally, like a lot of stuff going on, especially with that month. And it's just like you going into the Rose Bowl and also like you going against Vince Young, like uh, <laughs> going against uh, Aaron Ross. Uh, Griff was out there at safety. Uh, uh, Derrick Johnson was at uh, linebacker. And it was just like, it's like, yo, these are the games like you come to college for. Like I've always like, yo, big games, like I'm here. Like I don't like, there's no nervous part of me, like, Nova's burn my Nova's bone in my body. It's just like I'm ready to play, like because like you know that's what you're that's what you're in for sports for is to compete against like the best. So for sure. Um, and so at the end of your senior season, uh, you graduate with your bachelor's degree. You know, how did it feel to walk across the stage achieving your bachelor's degree? I know that was something that you had made a promise to your mom about. How did it feel to finally walk across the stage and, and get your degree? It felt good. I felt it, it felt great. I remember uh, I told my mom like she don't have to come up there. And she was so upset and like I gotta see my baby like guys like I'm the last to graduate and you know like I'm glad they came up there and everybody came up there and uh, it it was it was it was really special. I mean, that's I think because like um, is in the, like like I always say like like I said before like as far as like we talk about sports and what it means like you know everybody wants to like you know sometimes even today's days like they want their kid to be like the star athlete whatever and like I had parents that just like wanted me to just play sports and stay out of trouble right and like my dad was just like always supportive of me helped me out he always but it was like he he let people coach me and things like that he wasn't like you know like all down the coaches like throw back like try to like oh you need to play him he was chill like he just you know and he you know he talked to me you know he coached me up my mom you know like it didn't matter what I was doing on the football field it was like yo like what's your grades looking like right like, no matter what I was doing right. is, your room, is your room clean like it was like things like that like my brother always made fun of me like cause the only time that I've ever get in trouble was if I was like you know like I wouldn't clean my room or some stuff like that but uh you know, but uh, she, you know, she always pushed, like, you know, which is, you should, like, it was always academics for me, and, uh, and you know, she wasn't able to go to college, you know, growing up, and, you know, her sisters, like, my, I think my uncle was, like, the only one that was able, but, you know, was told and was able to, you know, go to school after college, you know, but they all went back and got higher education, you know, that was, you know, that's something special about like my mom and my aunts, um, you know, like I remember, I always tell the story to like the kids and stuff, like my brother, Bibi, Bibi, Bibi knows the story. Bibi, uh, I think he's like junior high, junior high, he gets a, he ended up getting like a D or something. And my mom's like, yo, you, you better not come home with a D once like this last report card before the summer. Yeah. And I don't know, like he, like he said, like man, I didn't, I didn't think she was serious. Like he came home with a D, like put the pork on the table. Like I think one of the days he, like he goes to grab his, like his hat and his, his uh, bat and ball and whatever. Like he's going to, you know, he going, we going to play little league baseball. And my mom, like, where are you going? And he's like, I'm going to play baseball. She's like, nah. Like I literally, like it is crazy because. I said, like, my, I know my brother wanted to be with, like, Chancey and them, like, two, two and on them, like, but he was with his little brother, like, the whole summer yeah. <laughs> because of grades. And, like, and when I seen that, I was like, oh, yeah, she's serious. Yeah. So I never really, like, I never really messed up, like, messed around my grades because, like, I don't want to be sitting there the whole summer and not doing nothing. Like, and, like, and, you know, he got, he got it going. Like, he got the right direction. He got the message. But, like, um, I think, uh, you know, and I, and I look at it like as like I told you before like it's a, it's a it's a perfect storm like where I got to where I needed to get like is you know part of that's you know academics you know like you know as, as far as getting like being a professional athlete like getting to the highest level like you know in order to play you got to do well in school in order to play you got to you got to be healthy and things like that you know and you know but after when I was done like I uh you know I got my degree, you know, from the University of Michigan, and, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, I've met over the years, and, you know, was it, you know, that, you know, I'm connected to, and they're able to help with certain things I do now, and, you know, it's, 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 um, 
I think that's uh, it's really it's it's really special, and it's it's really special that you know we you know like me and my brothers were able to all graduate from you know uh, college and you know giving that experience to my mom because she uh, she really really pushed that pushed us to do that, and um, I'm happy I was able to get that to her. Well, I think that's just a testament to your parents and the job that they did. You know, putting that foundation as academics being first. And for, for you guys that graduate with your degree, especially you guys coming from um, Braddock, PA, uh, is tremendous and it's a tribute to the work that they did. Um, so later on in that year, in 2007, uh, you were selected in the fifth round by the Arizona Cardinals. Um, how did it feel to get the call? Uh, man, it, it felt great, man. I, like, uh, I was back home and, you know, we had to, like, the um, – it was no draft party and nothing like that. It was just a bunch of people, a bunch of my friends and things like that. And I did not know where I was going to go. You know, the year before I had an idea, like, being a higher rounds, you know, after performance in a Rose Bowl. But, you know, like, I, you know, I played well, like, for four years. But um, I just really didn't know I was going to fall. You know, either maybe I could get high as the third round and things like that. Maybe second, you know, if I, you know, work my way up through, like, the combine and stuff like that. And, like, I remember, I think I told my brothers, like, if I don't get drafted, I'm not playing football no more. Like, and it, and I, and I, and the, and I don't think I was wrong for that. It's just that, like, I, I, I just had a mentality about, like, uh, like, football wasn't, like, I love playing football, but, like, football, like, all my life is, like, it's not me. Like, it's not, like, that's not the only thing I think about, like, I'm, like, and, you know, that, that may cost me a certain things, but as far as like working out things like that, but like, I just, I try to be balanced and I just try to not be like, Oh, I need to be about football and things like that. And at that time, I remember I think I told, I told my brother Dave, if I don't get drafted, like I'm not playing, <laughs> like I'm, I'm done playing football, you know, but that road is tough. Free agency, yeah. I, I must respect to all the, all the free agents that who get drafted. I mean, don't get drafted and take that road and become like, you know, who they are and even if you're playing playing like three or four seasons like that's a tough road and like one of my closest friends uh from the cardinals uh money mike you know he took that road and i i have to see him the experience like whether it's him getting brought up then him getting released and things like that and he ended up playing like i think seven to eight years and that that amazes me but um you know i just like yo i i i wouldn't have been able to do that like i was if i didn't get drafted i'm not going to do that and you know, I got drafted by Arizona, and, like, I did get drafted, and that was exciting. Like, I was just like, man, like, you know, that's finally, like, you know, somewhat, like, I'm a professional football player. Like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm here. Like, maybe I didn't think about it, like, you know, but I'm in my moment now. Like, yo, like, I'm about to play, like, and, you know, professionally, like, practice, you know, probably play some games and things like that. So, and, you know, my, my parents seen it, you know, my, like I said, I was at home with my parents and my brothers and things like that. And, you know, like it's, it's always, it's always special being able to give like, you know, and share like that experience with other people. So, but um, yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely an exciting time. So uh, you score your first touchdown against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Walk me through that play. Oh man. Um, I don't know, like, I was, I was close. Like, I was uh, – had a real good preseason as far as returning and stuff like that. And I, But it was more like kickoff returns and things like that. So, you know, I was getting some solid returns, but I wasn't, like, getting, like, the big returns. And, you know, we, we – Pittsburgh comes to Arizona. Uh, like, you don't – I didn't – I guess I didn't think about it till like, the, the week of and then the day of the game. It's just like, yo – I'm playing against Pittsburgh Steelers, like, and growing up, like, I was, like, uh, um, my brother, like, BB was a big Pittsburgh fan, things like that. Dave was a San Fran fan. I'm a big Oakland fan, you know what I'm saying? Like, brothers, you know, because, like, one of my favorite, my favorite players, my favorite player is Charles Woodson, like, Michigan, then going to Oakland, things like that. And um, so I was just, like, man, like, it was, like, that play, like, you know, it's it's the the game. I think the game was tied up at the time, maybe. So it's tied up. It kicked the first punt, and like it's like it's not a good kick. And 
I get cooled down. And it, I, I think it was like, I felt like he face masked me or whatever, but something had happened up front where they had to kick it again. And I remember like the second kick, man, he kicked this, like he boomed the ball, man. And I'm like, I'm going back there. And like, I don't, like I said, like, I don't really, I don't get nervous back there. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like football. So I get back there and I, like, I take the punt. And I just remember like, I'm going to hit this like on a stretch and hit it like and I stuck my foot in the ground and when I took off like I was like I got between I was like yo like I'm here like and in my head it's like yo don't get caught like don't get caught <laughs> and I think I don't know I, I wouldn't have seen it but Matt got a good block Matt Weary got a good block but I, I wasn't getting caught when I was in the open field and when I did it and like that's my first punt return and like that's one of them, that's the experience that I realized what I've done. Like I was like, yo, my first punt return against like my hometown, like the and like where I grew up at and I just like I was like, man, like this is crazy. Like the, the stadium was like crazy. And like I remember after the game, like, you know, that was like probably the deciding points of the game, whatever. And I go after the game, like my my phone is just like full of text messages and like yo like I hate that you did it against us and like and I, I loved it because I was like I wasn't like the biggest Steeler fan growing up so like you know what I'm saying so I like I loved it and like I love playing against like I just love playing against my hometown like that was a that was experience and me being able to get my first touchdown ever in the National Football League against them it's like it was crazy it was like unreal so it comes back full circle for you in Super Bowl 43. You see the Pittsburgh Steelers again. Um, how did it feel to come out the tunnel playing in the Super Bowl? Um, I tell everybody, like, um, it's – like, Lamar, like, Wood and Monday always make fun of me because, like, that week, like, I seen them once and I didn't talk to them, like, the rest of the week. And they was <laughs> – it's like man, it's, you know, talk this, da, da, da. like I was like, yo, I was like locked in, like I was just locked in, and uh, you know that game, it was like people like you were you nervous and stuff like that. I was like I wasn't, I didn't have no nerves. It was like one of those things, like man, like we watched this stuff throughout life like growing up, you watch the Super Bowl, whatever. It's like yo, I'm here, like I'm here now, like I just like. I didn't, I didn't feel nervous. Like, I just like, it's either be damn you do, be damn you don't. Like, make the play or, make, you know, like, or don't make the play. You know what I'm saying? Like, get out there and do what you, like, ball. Like, so, like, I, man, I had fun, like, that whole game. Like, it was like, it was like I was locked in and, like, I had no nerves and I just tried to make every play that I, I could. And it was like, it was exciting because it's like, yo, not only, like, I'm playing, like, you know, I'm playing the Super Bowl. This everybody wants to play in the Super Bowl. Like this is what you like you like, oh, I'm playing like I seen Dallas play the Steelers in the Super Bowl. Like this is the type of game they played in, like, you know what I'm saying? Like and I'm out here like I'm having I'm having a blast. Like we you know, it's a back and forth game. Uh you know, like I always in my head, like I always thought we was gonna win. Like we gonna win. No matter like even until that last Seconds, like I thought, Kurt might have just pulled something off and threw it up in Larry Q. One of them was going to grab it or something like that. But I mean, that that experience is like, I, I, that was one of the times that I just like this. That's that's my best football experience. Like even in, in a loss, like it was a it's a Super Bowl. Like you know, when you're a kid, you see it. Like you, you know, like you don't you, you see people playing in it, but like you're playing and you're making plays in it. Yeah. You're returning points. Like you're doing things like, and like, I've like not, there's, there's Hall of Famers that never got to that point. Never got so to that point. it's like, it's one of the, it's like, and you know, I, I was, I wish we could, have I, man, I wish we came out with the win, but like that experience is like, it was, it was a, it was a great experience and it was a you know, being part of that team and, the way we went in there and the way we ran the playoffs and, you know, it was, it was really good. It was really good. So you played with Larry Fitzgerald and Anquan Bolden. Uh, what was your experience like playing with those guys? 
Um, it was it was dope, man. Um, you know, I knew a lot about Larry before I got there. You know, with uh, you know, a bunch of my boys at Pitt. You know, like you know, you know, they knew Larry. I met him a few times, and um, you know, we keep keep in touch every now and then now. Uh, you know, but you know, being around those dudes, uh, I different. They're they're different. Like there's a there's a like you look at Larry and you know, have to you see Larry now, like Larry was probably less polished back then. Like he, he runs a lot better routes now. And but he worked, but you also see how he worked. Mm-hmm. And one of the things he like and he worked on this route running so much and like but like even though he had amazing hands, he constantly worked on his hands, like and you know, whether it's like, you know, a hand a hand out coordination things like that and like you seen wow he uh, how good he was and just the a freak of nature he was i mean like larry like i think you know even there's times where if i remember if if it's anywhere if he's in front of the db like larry's gonna come down with that catch like i never i, I never thought larry was gonna drop a pass like ever, and like we'll throw Hail Marys at the end of the game. Like I remember a forty nine game. I was like, if if it gets anywhere, Larry, he catching this, he bringing it down, things like that. And you know, then you look to the left, and you, I see Anqu- uh, Anquan. Like I look at Q, I'm like, man, he's a dog. Like he like he's like a running back in the second in the secondary, bro. Like he he catches that five yard, he'll turn up, drop a shoulder on you. And he got phenomenal hands and like the way he plays, like how like he was like I would say he's the heartbeat of like the offense. Like he was like he had a high motor, he ran through people, like he was just a straight it's not even like a receiver, it's like he's a straight football player. Like he he like he was like like I I tried like he, he knew every position, so like that was one of the things with him, like he helped me out as far as like I I understood, like, I wanted to be, like, where he was, like, as far as knowing every position in the office, knowing how it routes, knowing things like that, and he, like, as much as how talented he was, he was a smart football player, and uh, and they was both welcoming, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, Brian Johnson was there also, um, uh, uh, Ron McCoy was there, yeah. uh, and um Dutch, like he was like he was like, you know, he knew like Bonka and them from IUP and like those dudes and like he was very welcome and, and like uh he like I still we still friends to this day and I like, you know he's he's doing a lot of good things now. But like just that whole group, uh, like Brian Johnson from Penn State was there, like they they I learned a lot from like just those individuals, whether it's within that camp or within that year. And, you know, as I move forward and like the you know, as I played in the two seasons I had with Larry and Q out there, it was one of those things like, yo, like, I got to do my job. Like, I got to hold my, like, you know, you know, like, Kurt's at QB. You don't know where Kurt throwing up ball. Like, you, you better be open. You better be open on time. You better have your routes and things like that. And, but, like, it was beautiful when we, the way practice was, like, we was running. Like, we was making plays. The way, and that's how the season went, like, you know, like, and I ended up getting hurt, like, the next year, and I was out for, like, maybe a couple of games, I think, or whatever, but, uh, you know, like, when we was clicking, and, like, but it was, there probably wasn't a time when we really wasn't clicking, like, that unit was, like, when we was on the field, we played extremely well together, and I know that, like, you know, Kurt's going to find the matchup and he's going to put the ball where you need where the ball needs to be put and I couldn't slack off because of guys like Larry or Q or like you know we got bets like Edge in the back backfield like I got it and Kurt at QB and you know those are that's a good situation to go into you know most people will probably be like you know I want to play and like you know they think about you know I might not play and things like that but since I'm already here I got drafted here I got it. I'm going to sit here and soak all this in. So, you know, that was a, you know, that playing with Hall of Famers, like I think all three of them are going to be Hall of Fame. Like that's a, that was a pretty special group and to play with. So in 2011, uh, you signed a five year deal with the Chiefs. Um, <laughs> talk about that transition going from Arizona to Kansas City. Uh, it was, uh, transition was, it was hard. Like uh, it was, it was a difficult. 
it was a time we had a lockout. Like, so it was like, it was, un, we was unsure that we was even going to play the season. Like, so, uh, you know, at one point in time, it's, uh, it's, you know, I I missed like four games that 2010 year. I, I finished I finished pretty good, but uh, I missed like four or five games, and it was my as my contract year. Uh, like, and I'm trying to like I'm trying to push back like my knee will swell up and things like that, and and like I didn't like at that time like. Uh, you know, it, whether it's your injury, like your mental space and things like that, it's just like, you know, like, and then like the lockout year and like, so like, where am I rehabbing at? Like I had to deal with this like the whole year and I could go back with the, I think I could have went back with the Colonels and did rehabbing, but like, I just, that year was just like, it was a bad experience, you know? And like mentally, I didn't want to be around like, like just in the building at that time. And, you know, like, um, I ended up signing the uh, Kansas City, and you know one of the big reasons was Coach Haley was in Kansas City, who was my offensive coordinator. Um, my first year, my first two years at Arizona, and um, you know, and that transition was weird because we didn't have an OTA, we didn't have an off season. So my first day of meeting people was fall camp. So I don't have like I don't I wasn't able to build a relationship like with like uh, the offense or even even my teammates during the off season that you would usually have, you know? Right. So it was like, I came like in camp and just like, Oh, I'm here. And now it's like, you know, they might not make me feel like a stranger, but I feel like I'm a stranger. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I probably know coach Haley, coach Moe's the running back coach. Uh, I'm trying to figure out that was the only two people like, you know, I really knew from like, um, AZ. Um, but, um, I get there, and uh, you know, like 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 I said, the transition was uh, it was it was tough, you know, like, and now I got to get up to speed. Like, am I in really the shape I need to be? Because you know, am I was I really working as hard? Like, especially when my knee like swelling up on me, like often sometimes and getting drained and things like that. So, uh, it was it was it was difficult. It was difficult. Yeah, so during your time there for the two years that you were there, you know, it was plagued by injuries, coaching changes. Um, at, with all that going on, where are you at mentally with football? Um, man, that's a good question. Like, uh, I was still focused. Like, I was mentally, like, because as the season got going, like, I love my teammates in Kansas City. I think, they, you know, like, that was a good experience. Like, they were, it was a younger group also, and um, – so, you know, being out there with that group and, you know, being around them, like, you know, they was accepting of me. So, uh, but there was, there was, you know, like Coach Haley, you know, ended up getting fired, like probably like mid season. But we we actually finished that season pretty strong. We, like, we went to beat, we beat Green Bay. I had a pretty good game against Green Bay. We beat Green Bay, uh, which was undefeated at the time in that season. Probably like, I think they had like 14 or 13 wins. 13 all the time, we ended up beating them. We missed the playoffs by game. And, you know, at that time, it's like, I think we lost, like, several games, like, by, like, seven or three points. Like, we lost a bunch of close games, and we could have easily been into the playoffs that year. Um, and plus, we had a, we had some key key players hurt. I don't I think that was the same year. Uh, um, who got hurt? Um um, oh, Jamal Charles got hurt that year, yeah. so we lost him. And I want to say, uh, um, who else got hurt? Um, Barry got hurt that year. So you know that was it. Was just it was a lot. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot. Uh, me personally, like I was dealing with my knee problems. Like the moment I got there and things like that. You know, I was you know I was blessed to even know be on the roster and being there at that time so um but you know like I was also told like probably two or three years prior that my knees was going to be out of here anyway so you know like in my head like it was one of those things like you know like I had to <clears throat> mentally like it was tough but like I was pushing through because you know whether it's you know trying to be able to get to my second contract and things like that I think at the time right now it's like you know like 
it's about like my health and like it's a job. Like, you know, I think during that time I was just like, yo, I, I'm gonna get up every day, get my body right, go play and things like that. Like towards that time, it was like, you, I started to lose like, not fun in the game, but like I had a different mindset towards that game at that point. Um, you know, <clears throat> whether it's that and then like the second season was crazy. Like uh, I didn't, I ended up getting deactivated and, you know, there was, you know, I, I felt I could still play at that time. And like, you know, that happened. And like one of my teammates committed suicide, like right in front of like, it was like a double murder type thing. So it was like, he, you know, that, you know, in my head, like it became like, it shifted from, like, I didn't, I didn't think about football. Like, right. I just like, I don't, and I started looking at things within my own space as far as like, cause like I tell everybody's like, maybe I could sit there and like hop around freeze. But I was like, I got tired of being tough. Like I'm, I'm tired of like, yo, know, like trying to get my body right, taking his, I can tough this one out, play, come back, play da da da. Like I got, and then like, I don't want to be like some of these stories about like certain, what certain people go through with this game. Like, you know, you start thinking about that. And, you know, when you when you start thinking about that, when you start losing, like, you know, you know, some of the reasons why you play the game, like, it's about that time. Right. You know, I mean, I, I, and that, that also, like, it affected the way I, like, even when I got released from Kansas City, like, I was working out, but I wasn't working out, right. you know? Like, so it wasn't like, uh, like, I'm trying to get on a roster or anything like that. It was just like, you take me as is. Like it was like it was like I'm not going to like I was like and if I'm done playing I'm I'm done playing and so like you know and I don't think like I think it's it's difficult in terms of football in my mental space whatever like oh, I want to play I'm a competitor and things like that but I also like from day one I'm always prepared for this day whether I play two days a week a year for like four years, six years, remember if I say 10 years, like mentally I was prepared to like, oh, like when I'm done, I'm done. Like I don't look, like, I, I didn't like look back on football, like, oh, I need to keep playing and things like that. Like I was just done. So uh, you retired from the NFL. So how has life been uh, being <clears throat> retired from the NFL? Great. Yeah. It's great, man. It's great. Uh, uh, it's great. Like it's some. It's crazy. I was talking to Monday. Monday had said something the other day. It's like, uh, like it felt like it feels so long ago. Like, like it's like we never. Like it don't feel like we played the game like a football. Like it's just. It just feels like that. Like and I like every day. Like I there's sometimes I like uh, when I watch the games and you know. Uh, I think about like yo know, like how hard I was getting hit or like the pain like in. Like, damn, I took a hit like that. Like, the certain hits we were taking, especially at a time where, like, the rules were, like, probably more lax. Like, it wasn't, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that protects players now, even before, you know, you know, even now than when I played. And <clears throat> I'm just – but, like, those experiences, it's, like, uh, like, it's fun looking back at them. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I tell people all the time, like, I'm – I'm, I still feel I'm blessed to play this game and to play at a higher level, to go to college, get a scholarship, and being able to make, you know, you know, some sort of money out of it. You know, like that's, you know, that's the blessing. And, you know, just the, like playing the Super Bowl and things like that. <clears throat> like I never, because that's, some people want to do that. Some people, that's their dream to do that. So you have an understanding of that. Like, I, like and I, I'm blessed, but like also like with me, <clears throat> That's never, that's like, that's always been a part of me. Like, that's, you know, that's always been a part of me. But like, there's other things that like I want to do in life. And there's other things that like um, I didn't want to be like all entrenched into being a football player and like, oh, this is life. I, I'm uh, like, I need to be around it, whether it's with coaching or things like that. And like, people want to coach and more power to them and things like that. And like you know, they need it, and it, people do good coaching jobs. They want to be a part of the NFL. They want to do do something within football. But like, I don't. That's not me, you know. Like, and if I do do stuff within there, it's like it's 
is to because I have a certain knowledge about football or I want to help like the younger kids know certain things about football or like it's giving back to the youth like that's when I go back to the sport but it's not because like to, to feel like a personal like you know need for me it's like I did it I'm done with it now like now I'm like you know, like I'm enjoying some things that football didn't allow you to enjoy so you know with football you you understand you understand like when you go in college it's like yo like it's it's you know whether it's you go to study tables sometimes study tables at the building and things like that and like it's football 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 you know even the league is like that like yeah you have off season things like that but you know for you to hit your peak and like the stay above everybody it's like you're you're eating football you're constantly watching film you're doing all this stuff and it's hard to find a balance within that sport. So, like, you know, the biggest thing about, like, even the NFL is, like, when coaches, like, you know, holiday season, dude, the coaches, like, give your give your wife the credit card and have them go, like, uh, Christmas shopping and things yeah. like that because your focus is, like, you're playing uh, football on Christmas. Right. So, like, the, you know, I don't think a lot of people understand, like, you know, sometimes, like, holidays are important to families because, like, you you either, you know, you go shopping with your kids, buy, you know, toys, or you're around, like, Christmas dinner, like, Thanksgiving dinner, things like that. And, you know, you know some football players, they don't, they're not around their kids or their uh, family at this time. And, you know, you can never get that back. You can never get that time back. And, you know, some people put their bodies through so much stuff they get home and they don't want to hear certain things around their household. And now, like, at the end of the career, all the stuff they pushed away is right in front of their face. And because they didn't find that balance of, like, you know, going home and, like, figuring some way out to, you know, take care of the family, take care of the kids or speaking, communicating, things like that. And it, like I said, it's hard. And, you know, and sometimes it's a system where, like, you know, you know, you know, football is that system where, like, there's less distraction. So, you know, you're – they want you focused. They want you at the building. They want you on the field. They want you here, 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 here. And – but you have a – you have to – you have life outside of that. So you got to be mindful of that. And sometimes a lot of people are not mindful of that. And, you know, whether it's they go home, like, I don't want to hear it today because I had, you know, practice was bad or I got to do this or stuff like this. But, like, you know, when I was done, I – you know, I, I look back and I appreciated everything, but like I'm glad I, you know, I'm not saying like I'm just glad I, I had some sort of balance. You know, like maybe like it took away from certain things I might accomplish or how long I played, whatever. But you know, having some type of balance able, I was able to like when I was done with it, like I didn't struggle, you know, being done with it. Yeah, we've well, transitioned pretty well with uh, helping a lot of young people. Uh, you started the Steve Breston Foundation. What's the purpose of the foundation? Um, uh, purpose of is it is you know to help uh, at risk kids in the community you know, where we're from and things like that. Um, but we've done a bunch of stuff, you know, not only in Arizona, but we've done stuff in Kansas City when I played there. And I think one of the things with me was, you know, we do we do a bunch of stuff back in like Pittsburgh now, like or doing the Hills community and things like that. Uh, what I wanted to do was like, my big thing was not just like, like here, take this check or whatever for money. Like, I just wanted to like, you know, if I'm giving a check, I also want to be present. Like I want to give my time because I think that's more important than anything. Um, you know, just kids seeing people present, like, you know, seeing people that you know care and not just like here, and the money so like now we're doing more stuff because i'm i'm done playing i was done done playing so i was doing more stuff being present doing things like we're we're about to build a park in north red Hawk. so i mean that's that's amazing like you know just being able to you know have a space where you know kids can play have cookouts and you know stuff that we do when we was growing up and you know, now you have a just a space for that, like not at, not at someone's house, but like you know, parking space, food court, you know, playground. You got um, you know, cook some food up and things like that, and you know, that's needed. And things like that are needed to bring community together. 
you know like that's that's why i'm so big on because we was we was big on community growing up like we we trusted like, we trusted each other like families trust each other neighbors trust each other like you know your parents trust them. my parents trust you you know trust your parents with their kids you know vice versa like that's what you need and that's when you also need like when like when i when i had my camp like you know it's not pointing out like the athletes and professional athletes it's pointing out you know whether it's mission Lee's, you know people like mission Lee stars you know people around the community that's uh you know mr rich you know those are the type of people that the kids see every day so when you point those out like these are the people that would help you you know, like, you know, that like, we didn't have, we wasn't taught, like, we didn't look at pro athletes. Like, the people that helped us was our parents and, you know, our coaches and, like, the people around our community. Like, that was a support system. And that's why we, I feel like that's why, you know, a lot of, like, forget about professional athletes. We, we all, we've all, as friends, went out and done some amazing things, you know, within schooling. And we all done different things, you know. And some may not be within schooling, you know, like, you know, we got, we got booted down in VA, you know, went to a trade school right out of high school and, you know, you know, owned some houses, you got, you know, loving life and kids and, um, you know, like you see Bonk, he got his master's, you know, he's back around the way, but like, you know what I'm saying, he's, he's doing stuff, and like, you got more, you know, we got a bunch of friends that it's not like, these are people who came from this community and, you know, that's doing things and it's not about being professional athletes, it's about just uh, being a, you know, just a good, good person, good productive person, and you know, you know, helping like building your community up and not destroying it. Oh, that's good. So we're gonna transition into the last part of your journey. It's called the top five. So I'm gonna give you five categories, and you give me your top five in those categories. So we're gonna start off with the first uh, question here. I know you're a hip hop guy. You love music. You've always loved music. Give me your top five rappers of all time. Oh, you really just did this, man. <laughs> hey, your favorite five. It don't got to be your top five. Your favorite five. Order. No order, because I know I'm going to lose. No order. No order of all time, man. Of all time. Child. And it could be your favorite, too. It don't got to be, like, the top ranking. Your favorite or top five. Ah, oh, man, I got it. This is tough right here. I'm gonna put, you know, I'm gonna put Jay Z and J Cole out there. This is no particular order. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Order. Uh, we'll put uh, uh, Eminem. Uh, I'm sorry, your boy ain't gonna be up there. You know, <laughs> I was gonna... so, uh, uh, I just I'm like I like different like I, I like Kid Cut. Okay. I don't know if it's pissing the rap or anything like that, but like I like Kid Cudi. Mm -hmm. um, man, I got one more slot, huh? I got one more slot. slot. Man, who we gonna put in this last slot? I know I'm missing somebody right now. <laughs> man, we want we want the Kendrick in there, man. Yeah, Kendrick in there. Now, I think that's a pretty good mix. I mean, you got some younger guys, up and coming guys, or guys that kind of came along in the last decade, and then you got the great Jay Z and Eminem in there. So that's a good five. My second question is: Is you play wide receiver? Give me your top five wide receivers of all time. Of all time, mm. it's my top five or my favorite wide receiver. Top five. I do my, do my personal five and favorite receiver. Oh. Like. Uh, Man, that's good. Well, the two I play with, Q and uh, Q and Fitz. Okay. Uh, um, let's see the top five, and then we're going to go with like uh, we'll go with like uh, we'll go with like Peter Ward. It's like a you know childhood favorite one of you know, legend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, man, we got two. We got two slots left. Last left. Two slots left. Man. Man, do I go personal favorite? Like a pull some out of the uh man. Some that well like I was a big uh rock additional fan. So yeah. we'll put rock additional up there. Uh so we got Rocket, we got Peter Ward, we got Q, we got Fitz. 
We need a we need a fifth one. We're gonna fifth one. We're gonna fifth one. Man. College something. I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. Uh hmm. Is is there's one that he was like a he was a he's definitely he's a favorite of mine. Uh, Santana Moss. Santana Moss, yeah, big time, yeah. I don't know what is the name. In a uh, uh, Mercury Hayes, put Mercury Hayes, the Mercury Hayes, Santana Moss. All right, all right. So, give me your top five NBA players of all time. Oh, man. This is tough right here. My top personally, I'm getting my personal top. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, I'll go with uh, Jamal Crawford. Jamal Crawford. Uh, there's no order. Uh, Michael Jordan. Kobe. Personal favorite. Man, you said NBA, right? So NBA. Hmm. Say Iverson. Yep. I got one more spot. Oh, oh, uh, J.R. Smith, man. J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith, right. <laughs> man. J.R. Yeah. Smith, man. <laughs> that's what's up. That was out of left field. I didn't think he was going to say J.R. Smith, but no, nah, that's what's up. No, nah, he's definitely a baller. Um, so my next question is, is give me the top five places you've ever visited. I know you like to travel. You like the vacation when you get some downtime. What are the top five places you've ever visited on vacation? Ooh. Uh, hmm. Top five. Uh, I'll just go outside the country. We'll go we'll do Barcelona. Wow. Okay. Um, uh, Paris. Uh, I like, I enjoy London. I enjoy London. Nice. Um, uh, I think it's, it's, it's Ouija. Ouija, uh, I want to say Switzerland. Switzerland, okay. We, it's, uh, and then we actually walked up the, uh, the mountain. So, actually, it's, uh, yeah, sweet. I think it's Squeegee. Yep. So, that's, that's four, right? Yep. Uh, uh, um, I'm going to stay within the States and say uh, Hawaii. Uh, okay. Kauai. So. Um, so, for my last question of the top five segment, uh, give me your top five movies of all time. I'm sure there's going to be some Marvel movies in there, but go oh, ahead. <laughs> uh, five movies of all time. We're going to put Dark Knights up there. Yep. Dark Knight. um, the Civil War. Okay. Top five. We want, that's that's why we're we going to get those out the way. Then we want to get some. Uh, uh, Man, so I don't. I'm 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 keeping childhood movies out of there because there's a lot of child. I actually I'll put I'm put a, a a movie that I like when I was a child, but probably no one probably ever. It's called Short Circuit. Short Short Circuit. Circuit. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. Yeah. That was real dope. That was just a. I was probably that was young, so like we'll put that in. There's probably a, a billion childhood yeah. movies I would put up there. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I feel like I'm missing a movie. It's all I do is watch movies, so this is very hard. I'm just throwing out names right now, but uh, yeah. but uh, I like Lucky Number Eleven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, um, hmm. I feel like I've just seen a. You can, this is a, this is a tough one, man. I, I, That's why I asked I, you. I know you're uh, uh, a lot of like because the ones I'm picking is just like a, I'm just personally like them, but yeah. there's a 
a lot of good movies. The short circuit one was dope, though. A lot of people don't know about that, but that's what we had. That, like, dope, man. that was just some childhood stuff, but it, it was like it's a personal one for me. Like I, I used to love it. as a child, though, that, that that's a throwback one that people were like we watched all the time, and you know it came on a couple of times. You only had one HBO channel anyway, so. I'm trying to uh, figure out this next one. Uh, so I'm like, five, what's five, man? What can we have a five? We, I'm <laughs> kind of going to um, be like a good, good movie. I'm trying to think of a recent one that I've probably seen that was pretty good. Uh, man. <laughs> Uh, let's go, uh, let's go recent when I probably the, the seen in the past few months, eight months, uh, put this, put this, and this is not, it's not like off all time, but let's put Nas out, Nas out up there. Okay. All right. All right. Well, no, nah, I, I appreciate, uh, man, you completing the top five, uh, segment for me. And that was a struggle, man. I don't think I don't, I, we don't have to re- revisit that list, man, because I I just said some some names in a couple of them categories, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't I don't like that top five stuff. Hey, well, we might have to run it back. We might have to run it back at some point, man. We might that have to top five is never for me, man. <laughs> it's all good players, all good rappers, all good yeah. movies, man. Like yeah. too much. That's that's a that's a top five all, all the time. You know how hard that is, man. Yeah, it that's, is. That's hard, man. It definitely is. That's, um, but you, you definitely have some good ones and some different ones that I've, uh, I haven't heard uh, people actually list. Um, but just want to appreciate you coming on the show, bro. Um, you know, one of the things that's a big part of this show uh, of your journey is uh, talking about your journey, but also, man, giving you a crown while you're alive right now, man. You've done some amazing things, man, in the community that you've done and continue to keep doing good work with you building the park in Braddock or just be the guy that inspired a lot of people to do some unbelievable things, man, through your game of you playing football. Like I told you before, man, and I'm going to say it again, man, it was a privilege to watch you play the game of football, man. You know, I got a chance to watch you at a young age. You know, we were around each other every day from sandbox years um, all the way up and through high school and throughout college and throughout life. And it was just a privilege to watch you play the game. Number one, one of the things about your journey that was huge, and I think it w- it's important that we stress this, is that you was humble the whole time. You know, the stage was never too big for you. You was humble about, you know, everything that you got. And you were appreciative about everything that you got. And like you talked about, you never really got nervous about things just because you were appreciative just to be there and you wanted to go out there and have fun, man. And so uh, you didn't take the game too serious, man. And you still kept it fun and, and still kept um, that feeling that you had when you was a child. And I just want to applaud the things that you're trying to do in the community um, of Braddock, where we grew up at. Um, being able to go back there, even though you don't currently live there right now, man, but you, you're you doing some amazing things and inspiring a lot of people, man, with your work, uh, your story. And so I want to salute you, man, and give you your crown now while you're alive, man, because you're doing a lot of good things. And Steve, you haven't even hit your prime yet, man. So I want to salute the work that you're doing. Appreciate it. <laughs> what a, it feels like I hit my prime, man. His <laughs> body feels like I hit my prime. But I appreciate it, man. And that means a lot, uh, like, coming from you, like someone I grew up with. Like your peers, like, you know, like, your peers respect you and respect what you're doing. Like, I appreciate that, man. And, um, you know, like I said before, like, it's, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, give back to our community and that, you know, it's not just, you know, pro athletes who are active within the community who are still doing the same things that, that helped us with growing up, you know, like, still, and they're still being the support system to uh, a lot of these kids back around the way. And, you know, I just, you know, my my goal is to uh, you know make it easier for kids to see those people, and you know also to uh, to appreciate you know you know you know those people and you know the places and you know the things that uh, you know the community has and you know and just to build on that you know outside of you know not just you know, it's not about like you know we come from the sports area and things like that but it's like I think the the biggest thing with me was the the people and you know like my my family and friends like I think that pushed me to where you know it pushed me where I am today I am today and you know, where I was and and a lot of this because I was around genuine people and you know and 
when you know on genuine people like not only do you do things for yourself but you you do things for other people and you know and you know you feed off that energy you're you're, you're positive and you you help each other out and that's why I like regardless like with me move forward you know i know like the push is from is from family members and friends and that's why it's like i'm so comfortable when i'm back around y'all like it's just like it ain't like we never left you know what i'm saying like the conversations is good and you know we everybody's you know busy with their own, own lives and things like that but you know we're all busy doing you know productive things you know we're we're, we're, we're out there being positive uh you know, role models for our influence and in not only in our community, but just uh, across the country. So, sure. man, well, I appreciate you coming on. I want to thank everyone for tuning into your journey. Be safe and God bless. Uh, you too, fam. Franchise. <laughs>